Um, hi, my name is Reese. I'm going to give you a quick presentation on my optimization of some CTS cylinders, continuous toe shear cylinders with realistic imperfections. The structure of the presentation is broadly based around looking at how we define these structures and then looking at the optimization I performed to, um, to get these cylinders to um, show probably better properties than straight fiber counterparts. So a little bit of context as to why we might might want to use CTS in cylinders. Um, cylinders in axial compression show large discrepancy between theoretical predictions and uh, experimental results. And because of this, there's a large spread of knockdown factors, which is the ratio between these two results. What we really want to do is to make, make these cylinders not sensitive to imperfections, which has been shown to be one of the key leading factors as to why there's a large discrepancy between experimental and theoretical results. Previous research has found that we are able to reduce the imperfection sensitivity of these cylinders using CTS, and that's due to the symmetry breaking effect of the non-uniform stiffness field that is produced because of CTS. So CTS um, enables us to have in-plane shearing of toes. This is kind of counter um, what AFP does, which is in-plane bending. There's a number of benefits to this, primarily around the material um, quality that comes out of CTS, but also um, we're able to have an additional design feature where we can have fiber angle thickness coupling. So if we can shear a toe periodically, we're able to then have a consistent thickness buildup, which enable us to embed stringers or rings into the cylinder um, into the cylinder wall which will enable us to then hopefully have some insensitivity to these imperfections i'm going to quickly go over some nomenclature which is quite important when we look at these cts cylinders um, there are four key variables um, which are shown on the left in the box phi is the direction of initial shearing so if phi is zero it is aligned with the Sort of the axial direction of the cylinder and phi is 90 means the direction of shearing is circumferential. T0 and T1 are the angles of shearing so if we start at a T0 of 10 we could then end up at a T0 of 30 so we'd be shearing from 10 to 30 degrees and that superscript n is the periodicity which defines how many times we are shearing around the cylinder uh, axial direction or even around the cylinder circumference. So here we can see a 90 0 32 has initial direction shearing that is circumferential. It shears from zero degrees to 30, back down to zero twice around the cylinder circumference. So this is the nomenclature we're using to uh, define these CTS cylinders. The optimization I performed was based around a genetic algorithm but instead of having the perfect buckling load, an eigenvalue analysis, we uh, had a nonlinear um, geometric analysis to find the buckling load that had realistic imperfections. These realistic imperfections were measured from cylinders taken from TU Delft, and they had a similar size to the cylinder that we were looking at. And so we were able to have a comparison at least because we haven't yet manufactured CTS cylinders. The optimization um, was based around finding a high reliability buckling load. As you'll see on the right, the probability density function, what we're looking for is a, um, a very high reliability and therefore the mean minus three standard deviations. Now this means we're able to uh, have quite high certainty with the buckling load that we find from this optimization. So this optimization was used within Python Abacus scripting. And because of this, we're able to find that a CTS cylinder can outperform a QI cylinder by about 120%. So this is with um, a number of realistic imperfections placed onto the cylinder. So it could be that we may need to look at a wider range of imperfections, but the preliminary data show that this is quite um, encouraging that CTS is better than a straight fiber case. Um, and that means designers can have a higher level of certainty when looking at CTS designs over a conventional uh, straight fiber design. 
So in conclusion, we've used a novel um, imperfect geometry optimization with, within a abacus um, Python environment. And we've used a realistic data bank of imperfections. And this has enabled us to have a higher mean buckling load, but also decreased standard deviation variance, which leads to a higher reliability. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll be happy to answer any questions in the poster session.